Or press conferences. I mean, these are very colorful people, and they've they, they got a lot to say sometimes. And as I recall, uh, Parcells was on the field during practice. His kicker was about to attempt a field goal, and his, uh, he was saying to another player, take a look at this kicker. I'll bet you that he's going to make this kick. I think it was a long field goal. I don't know how long. And then, and what, how did that go? What else did oh, you say? And, and uh, they're, they're all exercising, like you've seen a lot of those scenes where it's obviously before the game and they're doing their pregame warm-ups. So they're all, all the players are spread about five yards uh, amongst each other. And he got him to get a smile on his face, and I'm sure he was trying to get him to relax and not be nervous before the game. And he says, I'm saying that he's going to make this kick. Now, now uh, Ferguson, whoever he was, the player, are you saying he's, he's going to miss the kick? And he goes, and he just smiled. He says, okay, coach, I, says, I say he doesn't make it. So it had to be a relatively long field goal unless Ferguson was just out to lunch. And he said, you know, if, uh, if he makes this kick, you owe me two extra miles mm -hmm. around the, around the uh, arena here, around the uh, stadium before we start the game. And he says, well, what, if, what do I get if he misses the kick? And he goes, well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and... Uh, I think he was going to let him play a, a few minutes more in the game, and he goes, now, again, if he makes the kick, you owe me those miles, and if you don't run those miles today before the game gets started, there's going to be some juice. And he goes, you know what that is, right? <laughs> and obviously the kid was not from the East Coast. And Tell him about the juice. He's going to have to run three miles instead of two. Well, juice, yeah, that's the ad. It's like interest, really. Well, business, paying time. Here's the price. You pay later, pay past due or whatever. Or the VIG is up. The price is higher. The VIG is up. The juice is up. Anyway. Yeah. Barcelles. It compounds daily with some of these guys back east. You know? And Barcells was showing his New Jersey origin. He was. And it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing for, I think, for, for him to, to be able to be comfortable in his own skin. And, and obviously he watches what he says because he was a head coach, but he showed his origins. You know, and, and I think that was a wonderful thing. Um, the other uh, Hall of Fame inductees, one was, John, John, one was Jonathan Ogden, who just, if the name sounds familiar to you, it sounds familiar to us also because he was the, he's a huge man. Uh, I want to say 6'8". The man is 6'8". Uh, he, he was a little over 300 pounds when he played for the Baltimore Ravens. And a, there's a 10-year eligibility on the, fall of the Hall of Fame. Once you retire... Um, you're not eligible even to be voted in and, and be a Hall of Fame uh, candidate for at least 10 years after you retire. Mm -hmm. And so he was absolutely uh, a dominant player, offensive tackle, I believe, and protected Ravens quarterbacks for many years. Yeah, absolutely. Played at UCLA, I think. I don't know. We'll look that up. You're always better with the. the you're always better with the colleges. Well, if I'm wrong about that, just just give me a mulligan. You know, pardon me for that. But I think he played at UCLA. In any case, one of the all-time greats on the offensive line. Ravens owe a lot of their success to him, and uh, he definitely earned his spot in the Hall of Fame. Uh, was a little a little surprised personally to find him um, on the top 100 players list of all time, and that was a players list um, that was compiled by by NFL Network. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think he was about number 72, but still, that's, that's saying a lot because if you're like me, what I think is, who gets all the attention? Whether it's a fan or, or, whether, it's a, um, or whether it's a conversation be between a bunch of little old ladies playing cards, if they ever touch on the subject of football, quarterbacks always get the attention. And then probably running backs and then probably wide receivers or vice versa. But here's here's an offensive lineman, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, that made it to the top 100. And I just think that that's fabulous that that he got recognized for um, his extreme performance in that position, and it was noted, you know. I mean, come on. Right. Well, linemen are not on fantasy football, right? And you probably won't be able to have draft a lineman in your fantasy football league. And the other thing is. For the most part, when an offensive lineman's name is mentioned, it's bad news because it's either he got called for a holding penalty or he gave up a sack. So it's kind of a thankless job. But <laughs> all those position receivers, quarterbacks, running backs, wide like receivers, right? not to mention uh, the coaches and the owner, you know, they know the value of the offensive line, especially the running backs. Well, quarterbacks too. So Well, I've always thought no. no They're the ones that do the hard work. Unless the offensive line is doing its job, <laughs> the running back has no hole to run through. He's running into a brick wall of eight uh, defenders, and the quarterback is running for his life. So, totally important. It's all about gaps for running backs. Um, doesn't matter what play uh, that they're given the ball. 
Um, if there's not uh, an offensive lineman or two that uh, uh, make a good block and create uh, some kind of seam of, of some sort or size for a running back to run up the gap, you're right. The play's not going to go very well, go, go very far. And if uh, we've all had a, we've all had a quarterback on a team that we liked the team, and we saw the quarterback on his on his uh, you know on his back quite a bit of the time. Well, that's because you had an offensive lineman that wasn't able to wasn't able to out trick or keep that defensive lineman on the other side uh, blocked. Or two or three of them. Sometimes you get yeah. Sometimes you get two timed or three timed, and yeah, and uh, that that can happen. But um, well, I want to say this much about Parcells. I think Parcells would be a super interesting guy to sit down and have a beer with. You know, go out to dinner, just talk stories, talk football, whatever. He is a I'll character. Same way. He always same way. struck me as a, as a real character, as in a super interesting guy. I, I'm intrigued. I would love to hear more, like of what the conversation he had with his players in the locker room. I don't think such a film exists, but who knows? You could probably, probably hear it from former players. And, uh, I don't know, he was a personality, he was a character. Long time in the NFL, a lot of success, and he was a great coach. He had to do with not just the X's and O's, but connecting with his players, motivating them, and uh, just relating to them, getting them to, to buy into his system and everything else. He was one of the best, I, I think. If we could, we'd invite him on the Joey and Mickey Pro Football Show for a live studio appearance one day. I'd love to have Coach Parcells here, not only for all the reasons that, that you gave, but um, he showed his personality from what I could see, and that's probably one of the things that I not only enjoyed, but probably admired about him the most. Um, with the media, mm -hmm. uh, with the story about what they caught you know, on the film, with the, with the juice, and you know, to me that, that, that shows a side uh, of a coach that is just obviously comical, and, and it's obviously showing the confidence of that coach that he's able to really let his hair down, so to speak. Um, Bill Parcells coached um, at a time when there wasn't as much of the general manager, owner, um, coach breakdown as there is today, almost all almost all the teams that are left, if we sit here and think about it, um, there is a separation. There is a separation between those positions. He was probably, if not the last, he was certainly, wouldn't you say, Mickey, one of the last coaches that was given so much power that the last two or three teams that he played for, they so bought into and he so sold them on his system and he had such a great reputation that they basically just turned over all the reins to him and he did he did act as the general manager and he was the coach at the same time I know for sure that the first team that uh, he coached for the Patriots uh, a little man by the name of Robert Kraft who's still the owner of the Patriots um, he had just bought that team the year that he hired coach Parcells to come in and they and they spoke on the show about all the tension that was between the two because Parcells clearly came across and 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 Kraft um, also mentioned this that you know I knew business but this was my first NFL team and Bill Parcells and him uh, many times uh, struggled because Kraft wanted him to bring him along and share with him the decisions that needed to be made and what it was like to own an NFL team, and just everything that went along with that, and, and what you had to do. And Parcells did, did not have the patience for that. He wanted to run the show, he knew how to run the show, and he didn't want to take the time to explain all that to him. I don't see any reason for a head coach to know or be involved in the decisions that a team owner makes. I mean, the coaching, yes. By the way, it's it, coaching, it, in the NFL is an extremely demanding, time-consuming job. I don't see how you could do anything else and be an NFL head coach at the same time. I mean, if you're married, your wife's probably not going to see you that often. Children, ditto. But to add on the duties of a general manager or even some of the duties of a general manager and to be able to, to, to do those and to succeed at the highest level, I mean, it's amazing. I, pardon me, I strongly, for, for many reasons, would, would imagine the same thing. That if you're, even if you're an extraordinary uh, person with knowledge and experience, like a Bill Parcells, 
coaching alone is not only so time consuming and strenuous that it would be very hard even for somebody that's at, at the higher echelon of that position and capabilities to be able to take over the general manager duties also. I think that is absolutely true. But it's funny because there was no mention of his of his wife. There was mention of his ex-wife at the fall at the Hall of Fame. She was she was in the um, she was in the audience, and I do recall him making a reference to her, and it was basically something along the lines of all those years that you were there for me and you were keeping the the home fires burning. Um, I just want to say I couldn't have done it without you, but it appears to, but it appears to me ever since that point. For most of his most of his uh, coaching career, um, I think football was his life pretty mm -hmm. much entirely. So maybe he did have time for that, but you know, where's socializing? Where's where's uh, fraternizing? Where's you know? Huh? It's off the window. I love football, but this sounds like there's some heavy sacrifices there, Mickey, but I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to say... Enormous, just, enormous sacrifices. Yeah, yeah. So, speaking of this top 100... Wait, I just have to say... <laughs> please, please uh, do. I'll be glad when the Joey and Mickey Pro Football Show makes it big time because the apples that, that we have on the set, I can tell... I'm competing with the worm here, and I'm coming in a close second. You know, I take a bite out of this thing, it goes all the way into the corner. Hello! Let me see this. No, he went back inside. He says, he's offended. He's, he's, he's accused me of trespassing. And in a sense, I am trespassing, but I thought it was my apple, not his. I'm having to share this apple with the worm. When, when we hit the big time, Joy, we're going to have apples that... that flown in freshly? Flown in fresh from uh, the, the orchards of Michigan, and, and uh, not worm infested, so... <laughs> Something to look forward to. Um, that that should never that should never be. I know. That should never be. I was going to offer you this and, one, but now that I've take, seen what happened with this one, I mean, maybe his brother is inside here. I don't know. Let's well, see. I, I can't hear anything. I hate to tell you, but this one reminds me of a, 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 a typical a typical seventy year old person. I mean, the wrinkles have started. If you take a look at this thing, well, that's not appealing. Apparently, to me. the worm didn't mind. I would I would bite into I would bite into that. I mean. He's taking up real estate that's free. You have to pay no matter what. <laughs> Big difference. I don't want to compete with a with a whatever the, whatever the genus or phylum of a worm is. What do you what? call what what genus are worms? Or like species or whatever the hell you call them. You know what's the uh, well they fall Latin under the name. they fall under the creepy crawly. Creepy crawlies. Yeah, I knew that was it. The order of the creepy crawlies. It's like the order of the elk, only it's underground. I call, I, this, I call this meeting to order. Will everybody please keep still? <laughs> that, and they never get anywhere because they can't keep still. And they can't sit up straight in their chairs either. Everybody's reclining. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever tried to get along with? Have you ever tried to get around with one hundred little tentacles? One hundred little tentacles? No, never. <laughs> and you know what they do? They when they finally. They, they can't get order at their meetings, even so, and you know how the, the lead worm does it? No. He has inside a large box, and he doesn't even have to open the box. He just <laughs> points to the box and mentions the box, because what's inside the box is an oversized, full-size, life-size fishing hook. And oh. all he's got to do is mention the fishing hook, and the worm's quiet. Zip. Aladdin. Zip. And they stop squirming and squiggling, and they listen. And they pay attention. The last thing they want to do is to be strung up on the fishing hook and sent out as a lure, do you, as bait. You know? Do you think? Do you think even somebody is, is six, uh, who who had as much success as Coach Parcells could could get a could get a could get a room full of creepy crawlies in order? That's how I mean, he it's would do like it. It's all like a tall order. That's how he would do it. In fact, that, you know, Parcells is talented. That's the thing about coaching, you have to understand your, your personnel, and Carcells, Parcells was a brilliant genius at that, and that's how he would do it. He would try oh, yeah. to get an order in a room full of warm. Well, obviously he was, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure there's several ways to go about it. I'd like to know what was his kryptonite, you know, what did, what did he have, what was his secret? His, his, well, the secret was worms we just talked about, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And at the end of the meeting, if they, if they win the Super Bowl, apples for everyone! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it too. I love it. That was hey, a that was that was that was cuter than cute. Thank you. Uh, Our producer has a, a signal for us. What is it? 